What's up everybody, I'm Jesse, or Game Over Jesse as you all may know me, and today is a great day if you're a Nintendo fan because we have two of the biggest Nintendo fans here with us to kind of tell us about their channel and see where the inspiration behind it comes from. Uh, they're called the Two Button Crew on YouTube and pretty much everywhere else they have a Facebook, Twitter as well. So mm -hmm. to start out, why don't you guys go ahead and let the audience know what type of content they can find on your channel. Yeah, sure. My name is Scott. And my name is Simeon. Yep, and our channel is Two Button Crew, and what we do is a lot like Good Mythical Morning, if you know Rhett and Link. Mm -hmm. um, and if you don't, it's like 10 minute videos every single weekday, and we cover anything Nintendo. Anything Nintendo. We'll have topics from whatever's currently happening in the Nintendo world, mm -hmm. we'll go into the fandom, We'll even go into obscure Nintendo titles from the past. Yeah, we have a every weekday. Pretty good rotation, so that it's like one video a week is a throwback to the retro Nintendo times. You know, Monday is typically when we cover the biggest news of the previous week, so mm -hmm. uh, it's a lot of fun. All right, and myself being a huge Nintendo fan, it's no surprise that. Uh, your, your guys' YouTube channel, which is dedicated to all sorts of different Nintendo-related topics, is one of my favorites. Um, so I've always wondered, what first inspired you guys to start your channel? That's a, that's a big question. <laughs> it's, a, it's a long and dirty history of <laughs> um, the permutations of what Two Button Crew has been. Yeah. But um, how we really got uh, kicked off as a YouTube channel was Scott and I have been friends for a very long time and... 15 years-ish? I think so, 15, 16, roundabouts there. Mm -hmm. And uh, Scott came to me with this idea and said, I have this idea that I think we can do. Yes. <laughs> and he he kind of pitched me the idea of doing a daily YouTube show. Yeah. And I was a little skeptical at first, but I said, hey, why not go with it? Yeah, because we've done a lot of creative stuff projects, partnerships before, but right before our channel launched, we had both gotten married recently. Mm -hmm. We had both kind of moved farther apart, and I don't think we were seeing each other as often. So I was trying to come up with like, what can we both do together where we get together, mm -hmm. we do something we both really like, mm -hmm. and we're also using our creative talents because I have a really nice job now, mm -hmm. and you do as well. I do. But at that time, I think that we were both kind of like, where we were working was really draining to us. And it's like, we need to find a way to have more fun together. Yes. And uh, use our creativity. All right. And you guys talk about both of you have really nice jobs. Uh, at the time that you started your YouTube channel, you were both newly married. So how did you guys first find the time and set the strict schedule of getting a new video up every single day, Monday through Friday? Yeah. Hmm. And then uh, even on the weekends, you guys started to where you would do coffee with the crew with the live stream. So there was that as well. Yes, That's true. Well, one key was that we had to choose a video format that is low in post production. So we do a lot of setup. We put up the lights and the posters and get the camera exactly like we wanted. But as far as once the footage is on our computer, there's really not a lot of editing we have to do to it. Um, we do almost all of our videos in one single take. Yeah. And we needed it to be a kind of conversational format where it's okay if we, you know, slip up on something and then correct ourselves. Doesn't happen all that often. Mm -hmm. But what we did is is choose something that. What's that? <laughs> oh, prop drop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we affectionately refer to that as a prop drop. Um, anyway. Yeah, we had to choose something that was you know, low in production, but could still be high quality. So that's the format that we landed on. And then just had to put it on our calendar. Like we yep. need to shoot this often. And I guess we should tell our trade secret. Yes, yeah, so our, tra <laughs> our trade secret is we shoot one time a week. Yeah. Um, whether it's five or six episodes, we try and stay ahead. Um, but we shoot it all at once. And then, it's called batching. Yes, and then you uh, sift through it and edit it on Sundays. Yep, you and do some of the writing for the posts. Yep. Because if you think about it, every time you make a video, you want to post it on Facebook, you want to post it on Twitter. 
So there's, a, and the, you know, the description, the tags, there's a lot of writing that goes into making a YouTube video, especially when you're doing that every single weekday. Mm -hmm. So assuming and I share that load and uh, spread it out amongst ourselves yeah. and a few other awesome helpers we have. Yes, yeah, speaking of that, um, Ryan mm -hmm. uh, really, he was the one who kicked off the Coffee with the Crew, right? Yeah, he got me into streaming. So, so he was our main streamer for a while and he mm -hmm. still is. Um, and so it's nice to have that other person to kind of round out um, you know, having the weekdays with the Daily Show, him on streaming with Saturdays, and then we also added the blog on Sundays to yes, write it out. A couple very generous blog helper yes. writers. So shout out to Glenn right. and Matt. So we have a pretty good team behind this. All right. And with so much work and effort going into your YouTube channel, what are some milestones that you guys have maybe set for whenever you reach it? Um, like a little yeah. celebration or where do you guys want to eventually get to? That's a cool question. It is. I remember when we earned our first dollar on YouTube mm -hmm. and you know Google doesn't send you a check and tell you accrue 100 but we still celebrated that. Mm -hmm. um, our first video with a thousand views was Octodad. Simeon, yep. why don't you uh, talk about your experience of being Octodad? Well, <laughs> uh, and, and that one was a lot of fun because, you know, the Daily Show, we're just sitting here talking to each other. But with the Octodad one, we got to, I got to put on a costume, the Octodad costume, and walk around um, town like Octodad yeah. and just get people's reactions. And that was a really nice change of pace where we could do something different, expand <laughs> on what we were doing. So that was kind of a celebration. And now we have over 400 episodes. Yes. And so that's another big celebration is, you know, every 100 or every 50 or so episodes, we get to celebrate another milestone. Yeah, but we're coming up on 500 fast. Mm -hmm. um, every time we get another 100 subscribers, that's a big, big deal. deal. We also like to try to respond to every comment that we get and that's getting a little bit harder which is you know it's a nice problem to have mm -hmm. um, but we're also not opposed to keeping it small and having a tight crew um, as we refer to our viewers yes. um, so that we're able to have back and forth discussions with them so we're not like super geared toward growth not doing a lot of you know, the click baitier side of YouTube, you know, to just get the people in fast. Um, but we want to have good relationships with the people that yeah. do find us and serve the Nintendo fans well. Yeah. All right. And with such dedication to Nintendo specifically on your channel, what was your first experience with video gaming or Nintendo, uh, whichever came first? Well, actually both. If uh, your first yeah. game was Sega or whatever, Atari, then what was that like for you? What game was it? And then what was your introduction into Nintendo like? When did you become such huge Nintendo fans? Mm -hmm. Me first? Yeah, you go first. Um, my first console was a Sega Genesis. That's what my older brothers had. And I really enjoyed playing Altered Beasts and Streets of Rage and Street Fighter and stuff like that. I had a lot of fun playing video games in the Sega world growing up. Um, but when I first got my hands on like an NES controller and played Mario, I could tell it was really something different. Um, the Nintendo games are very polished, and the characters are just really, really memorable. So I immediately knew that I was a Nintendo fan, and I saved up for um, getting my Nintendo 64 from a pawn shop. So I'm pretty young, um, <laughs> with that being my first Nintendo console. And so, I mean, you start a little bit younger. Yeah, um, my brothers uh, had an NES um, before I was born, and they played that thing like nobody's business. And then, so when I was born, of course, I um, wanted to be like my older brothers, and so I played with them. And so, my first memories are um, Super Mario Bros, Super Mario Bros 3, mm -hmm. uh, Mega Man 2, and Mega Man 3. Um, Simeon got really big into Mega Man. Oh yeah, right right away I had that initial jolt of um, getting into Mega Man, and so that's always been kind of my thing. <laughs> and so that was really my introduction is, you know, ever since I was able to hold a controller, 
I was playing Nintendo games, whether it was, um, you know, Mario or um, um, Legend of Zelda I didn't come into until later, but... Um, Mario or Luigi. Yeah, Luigi, <laughs> you know, but but just those uh, early Nintendo games. Uh, and then I kind of straight off and uh, did the Sega thing for quite a few years. And then with the GameCube really came back to Nintendo. Yeah. Because how could you resist the, that Smash Bros? Yeah, that Smash Bros. Robo, Melee. Metroid Prime. Oh, you those can't ones. resist that. No. <laughs> All right. Well, we're getting pretty close to the end here. We only have three questions left. So, uh, with you know my YouTube channel, your guys' YouTube channel, we collaborate sometimes. What are mm -hmm. a few other YouTube channels or podcasts you would like to work with? Hmm. We are. Really bad at this, just because we like have our head down. We're making content so often, we rarely reach out to other people like we should. That's true. Um, but we have worked with Boundary Bake a little bit, mm -hmm. and I think that you referred us to him, Jesse, and yeah. that was great because yes. we were a perfect fit. He's an awesome guy. Um, but as far as who we'd like to, <laughs> um. One person that um, I think I'd really like to see us collaborate with a little bit is the Wii Viewer. Mm -hmm. And even though he's mostly doing just reviews, he seems like um, the kind of person that I think we could both um, mutually benefit from mm -hmm. being on each other's channels. And so he, he's one that I've been following for a while that I kind of like to um, see us collaborate with. Okay. Yeah. Well, let me put it this way. If I was dying of cancer and I got to do like the Make-A-Wish Foundation, I would want to go on the Nintendo Voice Chat podcast from IGN and then Game X... No. Well, they're really cool. But I meant to say uh, Game Informer. They have a great podcast and I've been getting my questions into their question section pretty consistently. So I like to actually meet those people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um... You mentioned Nintendo Voice Chat. There's two hosts of that that I would love to sit down and talk to, whether they were on my YouTube channel, I was on theirs, or even if it was just casually talking without recording, it would be really awesome. But yeah, uh, mm -hmm. Jose Otero and Pierre Schneider are both yep. uh, really great, knowledgeable Nintendo fans. So I would love to sit with them, especially with all of the uh, background information that they might know that other people mm -hmm. might not necessarily know because of their connections yeah. in the industry. So I would love to yep. kind of dig through their minds. I agree. We made a whole video on our <laughs> channel about Nintendo Voice Chat, how great they are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they responded, so that's nice. Oh, that is awesome. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I actually <laughs> seen the video, but I, I wasn't aware they actually responded. Um, yep. But another uh, interesting question, this is one that's always on my head. Okay, so Nintendo we know because of the Wii U. Like the Wii was a huge success, the DS, the 3DS were all huge successes as well, but the Wii U they kind of slipped and fumbled the ball a little bit compared to uh, yeah. the fan base they used to have. Uh, the games were really great, it was just the console really didn't do that well. Mm -hmm. So if Miyamoto just showed up at your house, knocked on your door, and asked for your advice to make Nintendo successful again, what would your advice be? make Nintendo successful again. Yes. Uh, they have the Switch coming up. They're trying to yeah. regain some of that Wii audience that they lost with the Wii U. So what's some advice that you would give Miyamoto? I think they're on a very good trajectory right now with the Switch. Um, I'm feeling an excitement again in myself and fellow Nintendo fans that I didn't feel around the Wii U. So I think they're going to win a lot of people back. But... Um, I would ask, I would say, Miyamoto, you should hire me and I'll be your advisor because <laughs> there's a lot more than I can explain in one session. Yeah. But I think that they should just really start doing a lot more of the so-called obvious choices that, yeah. like the things, they say that they read all the forums and hear us, but it doesn't feel like that all the time. Yeah. There are times when it's like, okay, Nintendo read my mind. Great. They made uh, GameCube controllers again for Smash Bros. Mm -hmm. But, um, like... I would make sure that Nintendo services each segment of their fans um, for from within like three to four years. You know, another game 
for the Metroid fans and the Hero fans and stuff like that. Because there's just so many people that have been feeling left out for a while. Mm -hmm. Well, How about you think? At, uh, really quick, oh. at E3, Reggie did say during an interview that he knows uh, Metroid... Oh, I forgot the name of it. But the 3DS Metroid game they made, he said something along the lines of, yes. he knows that isn't the Federation Force isn't the Metroid game that fans want. He had better know. Yeah, so <laughs> I always thought that was interesting that maybe he was hinting towards them being like, okay, we know this isn't the Metroid game that you want, but we're working on that game. We just can't announce it yet. That's how I took it. But Yeah, that's how I'm taking it. Yeah. <laughs> that's yeah, how I you, take you, it you to sleep at night. Hope. Always have hope. Yes. If, if they were to, if Miyamoto were to ask me, mm -hmm. I would say... Um, probably two things. First thing would be Metroid. I want Metroid. Uh, second thing is uh, I, I love that Nintendo isn't um, they, they do something different than the other companies do but I would say you know for a little bit because their focus I think is a lot of the gimmicks mm -hmm. and you know I, I love them for their uniqueness but don't focus on the gimmicks anymore it is you know, mm. you know, have them, you know, make some games for them, but don't let that be your focus, especially for your big hitters like Mario or Zelda, because even though they sometimes add to the experience, um, a lot of times they take away from the experience. And it's just like, man, this game would be different, but I think um, a better gamer's experience if I were just sitting here with my controller yeah. and not having to waggle it around or, you know, <laughs> tap on or whatever it be. Star Fox Zero Syndrome. Yes. Oh, yeah. Just, you know, give us the game and the controller and, you know, focus on that more than you focus on the gimmick. Well, it seems like they're kind of heading in that direction again with yes. the Switch because it does have the motion controls and it does have the touchscreen stuff that the Wii U and the DS and 3DS had. But... Unlike the Wii U, it's not, well, unlike the Wii U and the 3DS, it's not focused on the dual screen aspect. So yes, most true. games are going to have to be built to function with a normal controller. So that's good. And then they yes. do still have motion controls, but I think that's more of a way for them to bring some of those classic Wii or Wii U games that had motion control that everybody liked. So yeah, I'm uh, hoping. I don't. Yeah, watching the Switch presentation, I saw the segments with like one two Switch, which had a lot of bright backgrounds and families of all ages having fun and stuff like that. And then there were also, you know, the Zelda and the Mario stuff, where I could see that looks like they're doing a pretty good job balancing this yeah. time around. Whereas we went kind of really far to the friendly, family friendly, whatever, and then Wii U was like it didn't. Um, make anything for those fans at all really and the install base really showed negatively for that so switch looks pretty uh, good balance so far. yeah I mm -hmm. I specifically liked the presentation it wasn't what I would have hoped for because I would have loved for them to come out at the very beginning and just been like Zelda Mario Metroid Star Fox <laughs> you're getting them all within the first two years that, well, there's still E3. Yeah. That might be more of an E3 yeah. uh, jab, jab, See, jab, right yeah. hook kind of thing. So I think that would have, you know, that would have been what I would have preferred. But I think the way yes. they did it was the best possible scenario. That way, you mm. get the games like One Two Switch. You get the games uh, like uh, oh, I forgot Snippet Pick Snippets or whatever. Mm -hmm. what Snipper clips, clips and yes. arms. Yes, you, you get the games like that that are going to bring back some of those Wii casual players that were lost during the Wii U era. And yep. mm -hmm. they showed off the Mario game, the Zelda game, um, Splatoon, which is more of for the hardcore fans. So they kind of had the best of both worlds there, and they still have a lot more stuff to announce at E3, which is just a few months after the initial launch. So yes, I agree. I'm impressed that the presentation was so good while they're still presumably mm -hmm. saving their best stuff right. for June. So what a great time to be an Nintendo fan. And uh, I guess that kind of brings us to our very last question here. So if either of you guys could have a one-on-one -on -one interview with anyone at Nintendo with absolutely nothing off limits what would it be and or who would it be and what questions would you ask 
So it could oh be, <laughs> you know, somebody working uh, with Miyamoto. It could be the people that work on Smash Brothers or just anyone at Nintendo. <laughs> uh, I oh, that's really hard. Um, you know, I'd I'd like to, you know, ask the president about you know all the games and all the. <laughs> game plans that he has <laughs> coming out. But I also like to like talk to Reggie because, you know, I'm a big fan of Reggie and it, I think it would be a lot of fun just to like pick his brain and say, so Reggie, what do you do? <laughs> and, and have it, or like, you know, what do you do on like a day-to-day -day basis? Like walk me through like a regular day with Reggie because uh, Reggie's a fun guy and he yeah. seems like a really nice guy to just sit down and have a chat yes. with. Uh, I was thinking Reggie as well. He is such a practiced PR spokesperson, though. Mm -hmm. Like, it's hard to get anything out of him. I'd love to sit across from him and just, like, wear him down. And if he starts to say, like, you know, we don't have anything to announce this time, I'd be like, no. no. I'm serious. What were you thinking with this and that? But since you went with Reggie, I will choose Sakurai because Smash Bros. is the series that I've gone the deepest with. So I have a lot of questions for him. Oh, no. um, we Not made an episode Kirby? which was... <laughs> no. <laughs> we made an episode about like what a Smash Bros. tournament edition could be, and I am in the Smash competitive scene, so I want to talk to him about just everything about that game, about tripping and brawl, about his sad obsession with Fire Emblem, about <laughs> where, how he can see this series evolving from here on, um, how he develops these intensive games and maintains what little health he has left. <laughs> Sounds like I'm being very negative right now. I like Why some, did you do this? I know. I would love to talk to him and play with him and challenge him. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah, do you, do you think he's actually really good at the game, or do you think he would just be like an average player? I think he's really good because I've seen him play against himself one GameCube controller in each hand. Oh wow! And I can't touch that. <laughs> so yeah. my goal would be to get him to like fifty percent damage before he KO'd yeah. me on my stocks. <laughs> well, I I liked Reggie as an answer because um, with the interview with Mike Drucker that you guys uh, were supposed to be on originally. Oh. <laughs> yeah, whenever uh, I think that was more of my fault with uh, scheduling issues, but one of the funnest sounding things that Mike talked about was whenever they moved offices, they had I want to say it was a paintball fight through the office with Reggie and everybody else playing. Yes. <laughs> so like. And that's how they came up with Splatoon. <laughs> and while you might be afraid to shoot your boss with a paintball gun. Um, <laughs> You know, Reggie kind of just seems like the guy that even if you did hurt him a bit, he'd be all right with it and uh, maybe try to get you yeah. back instead of firing oh, you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, um, so Reggie would be a fun answer, but I think I would go to either Aonuma or Miyamoto and just, like, yep. um, mm -hmm. talk... Because Miyamoto doesn't work directly on the Zelda series anymore. Aonuma's the one that's I guess mostly in charge of what direction it takes and then uh, I think he'd be your man yeah so I would like to I guess talk to both of them and just ask them if they were able to create any game whether it's taking Mario Zelda Metroid whatever and making their own ga mm. new game out of it or a brand new IP entirely just ask them mm. if money wasn't an issue or worrying about sale goals what type of game would they like to work on like mm -hmm. what ideals do they have brewing in their head but they can't necessarily do because maybe the president or whoever is above them doesn't think that it'll do well yeah i know miyamoto's really been wanting to make nintendo <laughs> <laughs> not really yeah um but yeah i guess that <laughs> brings us to the very end so thank you guys for joining me and allowing me to be on your channel as well and this is our symbol yeah. yes no. <laughs> for uh, everybody that's listening why don't you guys go ahead and let them know once again where they can find you and what type of content they can find on your channel two button crew is your daily nintendos of fandom awesome yes slogan. and you can catch us 
um, on youtube.com or at our website twobuttoncrew.com where we have uh, content every single day of the week. Mm-hmm. Yeah, join the crew. And uh, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, everything is slash Two Button Crew, right? Yeah, absolutely. And Instagram and Snapchat as well. It's all Two Button Crew, no spaces. Yeah. So it yep. should be very easy for you guys to find them. Go subscribe to their YouTube channel, especially with all of the Switch content that's going to be coming out in the next few mm-hmm. months. Um, Yes, our third member is flying here from Michigan to join us and be at the midnight release and everything. So we're gonna have all kinds of videos and coverage and streams. Mm-hmm. And if we're not watching your stream of the <laughs> Wild Jesse, yeah. and uh, <laughs> with all that out of the way, uh, thank you guys once again for joining. Thank all of you for watching this video, and don't forget to go subscribe to the Two Button Crew. You won't regret it. Thank you very much, Jesse, again for having us on the show. What's up, everybody? Really quick before we get to the usual in slate, I wanted to mention a quick update for this channel. I'm trying to bring together a few new series other than the usual discussions and news videos that we do. I would like to bring quality reviews, let's plays, do more live streams, a top 10 series, and more analysis videos. However, to do this, I need your help. Between being a new father, YouTube, and my real job, I don't have the time to work on all of these videos. So I'd like to bring on other people who can help out from time to time, like Sissizi and others who have helped host and edit videos before. To make this all happen, and to get awesome rewards for yourself, head over to patreon.com slash gameoverjesse where you can get shoutouts and videos, join our group discord and chat with us whenever you want, be a guest on some of our videos, and much more. I want to thank you all for watching this video. If you liked it, give this video a like and share it with your friends. If you haven't already, please Please subscribe so you don't miss out on future gaming news, theories, rumors, and discussions. Also, let me know your thoughts in the comments below on how it could be improved. Your feedback is the most important part of bringing the quality of content on this channel to be the best that it can be. I would like to take this time to give a huge thank you to this month's Patreon supporters, Jonathan, The Itch Network, Magic Tech Review, John Frank, and Harris Priest. This video was made possible by supporters on Patreon. If you would also like to support this channel, head over to patreon.com slash gameoverjesse where you can support this channel as well. Rewards vary from having your topic featured on a future discussion, seeing videos early, joining as a guest on a video, shoutouts, and having a custom avatar similar to my own drawn of you to match any video game or anime art style that you would like. Mine is of myself as Link, but you could choose to have yours any way that you would like. Finally, I would like to thank my friends CSGuitar89 and Nomo Designs for providing the music and artwork for this video. Aww.